I'm Tabitha Rossbroy, and I am your host for this episode of Learning Across Kansas. Learning Across Kansas is a partnership between the Kansas Department of Education and the Public Broadcasting Service. Together, we hope to ensure that you continue learning through the physical distancing and the health issues that are facing our society today. Not only do we hope to enrich your lives with learning activities that you can do from your home, but we hope to have a lot of fun together too. Today on our episode, we are going to be celebrating Earth Day! We celebrate Earth Day all around the world on April 22nd each year. We have been celebrating together since 1970, which is 50 years of honoring our Earth on this holiday. Through that time, we have mobilized 1 billion people each year to take action to preserve and protect our Earth's most valuable resources. We have given a voice to environmental consciousness. And together, like we say in my preschool class, we can make a difference. Through today's episode, we hope to provide you with ideas that you can easily join in on using materials that are commonly found in your home. We have so much in store for you today. We are going to be learning about science and music and art and literacy and moving our bodies, all while practicing ways we can help the earth for this Earth Day. Now, first up, we're going to pop on over to the lab of Mrs. Wynn and see what kind of experiment she has in store for us today. Hi, and welcome to our STEM lab here in Waukini, Kansas. I'm Mrs. Wynn, and I want to celebrate Earth Day with you. Earth Day is a great day that we can remember how we reduce, reuse, and recycle to help make our Earth a healthier place. Today, Let's look at how we can conserve water. Yes, water. Water is a natural resource and we don't want to use it up too quickly because we want to have plenty of water for years to come. In this day and age, we have been doing everything we can to stay healthy. One thing that people have recommended to help us stay healthy is to wash our hands. I wonder, how much water does it take to wash our hands? Well, let's find out. Today, we're gonna wash our hands. We're gonna start with soap. We're gonna rub, we're gonna scrub for the recommended 20 seconds. Here we go. Happy birthday to you, happy birthday to you, happy birthday dear Sally. Happy birthday to you, happy birthday to you, happy birthday to you, happy birthday dear Sally. Happy birthday to you. And then we're gonna rinse our hands and get all the soap off. And then we're gonna turn the water off. And that's how we wash our hands, right? All right, let's just see how much water it actually took to wash our hands. I have a beaker here, so I'm gonna pour this water into the beaker. When I pour the water into the beaker, I can measure the volume of the water. When I get down at eye level, ah, looks to me like we've used 600 milliliters of water. 600 milliliters of water. I wonder if there's a way that we can conserve or save water with washing our hands. Let's think about this. How could we save water? You've got it. We could just turn the water off while we're scrubbing our hands. Let's try it. Let's see what, what it takes. Did you know if you sing the happy birthday time, the happy birthday song two times, it's about 20 seconds. Let's try again. Just get my hands wet. Then I'm gonna scrub without the water running. Happy birthday to you, happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear George. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear George. Happy birthday to you. Then we turn the water on to rinse our hands. 
and turn it off right away. Dry up our hands, and I wonder if we've used less water. Well, let's find the volume of this tub of water. All right, again, eye level helps us be accurate. 200. Whoa. 200 milliliters of water is all we used. So when we turn the water off, we only used 200 milliliters of water. When we left the water running, we used 600 milliliters of water. Which one helped us conserve? You're right, when we turn the water off. If you can save that much water washing your hands one time a day, I wonder how much you could uh, save washing your hands several times a day. Or I wonder how much your whole family could save if you shared the information with your family. My challenge to you, to be a good citizen and turn the water off as you're washing your hands. And then see how much water you can save and also try to share it with your family and see if they can save water too. Thanks for stopping by. See ya. Thank you, Mrs. Wynn. That was incredible. Science experiments are such an engaging way to learn about the things we can do to care for our earth, like conserving water. Anybody at any age can help conserve water. And by doing this, we take less from our water sources and we save some of the energy and heat that it takes to pump water into our homes. It is now more important than ever to wash our hands. We can do that in a way that is both safe for ourselves and for the earth. Kansas school buildings may be closed for the remainder of the academic year, but school is still in session. Keeping students engaged in the learning process during this extraordinary time is critical for their ongoing success. We salute our teachers, parents, and guardians who are committed to ensuring their students finish this year strong. We're all ready for our lives to get back to normal, but until that time, Kansas students, keep learning and keep working towards your goals. Together, Kansans can. We are now going to hear from music teacher Mrs. Nobach as she shares an original Earth Day song for us. Then we're going to hear from art teacher Mrs. Clark as she shares an easy activity to do with recycled materials. Hello boys and girls, my name is Mrs. Nobach and today's lesson is on Earth Day. And I thought it would be really fun to make up a song together and sing a song about Earth Day. A couple things we need to remember is we need to use our singing voice. And also when we sing, we wanna use that correct posture, back up straight. And the last thing is as we sing about our earth, remember how wonderful it is. It's the place that we live. So we need to sing from our heart. The song we're going to use today is a very familiar song you might've heard of. It kind of goes like this. Do, 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 do. Have you heard that song before? It's called, Are You Sleeping? So what we're gonna do is we're going to put our own words in there and it's gonna be about the earth. Look at the words on the screen, follow and sing along with me. This is Earth Day, this is Earth Day, let's do our part. This is how to start, recycle and reuse things, appreciate its beauty for all time for all time. Wonderful job, boys and girls. All right, so now we know a song about Earth Day. I would like for you to sing it to your family and friends. Remember, use your singing voice, nice singing posture, back up straight, and also to sing from your heart. Thank you very much for listening to me today. This is Mrs. Nobach. Have a wonderful day. Hello, artists. My name is Mrs. Clark. And today we're gonna to talk about the ways artists reduce the amount of waste that's created by recycling items in their artwork. You might find some recyclables around your house that you can use to make a creation of your own. And we're gonna be focusing on two artist behaviors, stretching and exploring and envisioning. 
Stretching and exploring means to think about things differently beyond their normal limitations. So we're gonna look at everyday items that you might find around your house and stretch and explore how they could be used in an artistic way. And then envision some projects that you might be able to make at home. Some artists only use recycled materials in their work. What kind of items can you collect at home to use to make art? You could take a food cardboard box, cut it open and find a surface for painting or drawing inside. I painted flowers I saw in my spring garden. Or perhaps you could use the piece of cardboard left over from underneath your frozen pizza to make a mask like this child's mask. It was made from cardboard, crayons, and scraps of gift wrap and even the inside of a granola bar wrapper that was shiny to create the hair. You could create a sculpture with toilet paper tubes, old greeting cards, or even plastic items that can be sanitized. Don't have any tape or glue at home to attach those items? No worries, you can make a cut or a slit in the side of your cardboard item and attach another piece on top. Slide it through the slit, create your own sculpture. If you'd like to paint and you don't have paint at home but you have water-based marker, you can add a wet brush to create the look of paint in your artwork or you can make your own paint with a little bit of coffee grounds and hot water. I let it set for 15 minutes and then painted some of my favorite things. Remember, these artistic skills to stretch and explore and to envision are the same creative processes used to make innovative discoveries in lots of different fields. So whether you're going to become an engineer, a scientist, work in the field of technology or design, you can benefit from exploring art at home with recyclable materials and practicing stretching and exploring and envisioning. Happy creating artists. Thank you, Mrs. Novak and Mrs. Clark for teaching us fun ways to think and to practice how to reduce, reuse, and recycle. That song is going to be stuck in my head, and I'm glad because it talks about ways that I can care for the planet that I love so much. Hey parents, you're doing great! With Kansas school buildings closed and homes being turned into classrooms, parents and caregivers have expanded their roles in their students' learning. This is a new experience for most of us, so let's show one another a little grace. When you and your students start to feel overwhelmed or stressed, take a break. It's really okay. Keeping students interested and engaged in learning is the key to success. Remember, you have an entire community of fellow caregivers and teachers to lean on. Reach out. Together, Kansans can. In the next segment, you are going to join Mrs. Rogers as she teaches us about plants and about phonics. I want you to pay special close attention because when I see you after the segment, I'm going to ask you an important question. And that question is, what do plants need to grow? Can't wait to find out your answer. Well, hey there, friends. I'm just doing a little bit of gardening today. Do you have a garden where you live? You know, gardens might look a little bit differently depending on where you live. You might be helping a small plant grow, or you might be helping grow fruits and vegetables. Hey, what do you know about plants? What do they need to live? That's right, they need sunshine. We don't have a lot of sunshine today, but sometimes that's important too get a little bit of shade. What else do they need? That's right, they need water to grow. And they also need good yummy food that they can find in soil. Hey, soil, that's kind of a funny word, isn't it? What sounds do you hear in the word soil? S, oi, oh. That's right. Do you know what letter makes the s sound at the beginning of soil? That's right, it's the letter S. What letter makes the O sound at the end of the word soil? L, terrific job. Do you know what letter makes the OI sound in the middle of the word soil? Well, it's actually two letters put together that make that sound. The O 
and the I put together make the oi sound. There are another two letters that make the oi sound. O and Y put together make the oi sound too. When you hear oi at the end of a word, most of the, of the time it's gonna be the O and the Y together that make that sound. When you hear oi at the beginning or the middle of a word, most of the time it's gonna be an O and an I together to make that sound. Hey, can you help me find some words with the oi sound? I've got some seeds here. And on these seeds are pictures of words. And some of them have oi and some of them don't have oi. But I'm looking for the seeds with um, the oi sound so that they can grow really well in my soil that I have here. Are you ready? Let's take a look. Oink. Does the word oink have the oi sound? It sure does. That oi sound is at the beginning. So we're going to put it in the oi pot. What about coin? Does coin have the oi sound? It sure does. Coin. Oi is in the middle of coin. We're going to put that in the oi pot too. What about this word? Fork. Do you hear the oi sound in the word fork? There's no oi sound in the word fork. Nice catch. What about this word? Toy. That's right. Oi is at the end of the word toy. So we're gonna put it in our oi pot. Let's try this one. Boy. Do you hear the oi sound in boy? That's right, oi is at the end of the word boy. We're gonna put this in the oi pot too. You're doing great. Bone, do you hear the oi sound in bone? There's no oi sound in bone. We don't want this seed for our pot. What about this word? Joy. That's right, oi is at the end of the word joy. It goes in O-Y. What about stop? Do you hear the oi sound in stop? There's no oi sound in stop. We don't want that seed. Last one, voice. Do you hear the oi sound in voice? That's right, oi is in the middle of the word voice. It goes in the OI pot too. Hey, terrific job. You know all about the OI sound. Can you find some words um, in your home that have the OI sound too? I bet you can. Well, I got to get back to gardening. Thank you so much for helping me. I'll see you next time. Oh boy, I sure enjoyed that lesson. Did you hear what type of words I used? Now remember, I said I was going to ask you an important question after Mrs. Rogers taught us something. Now let's ponder and think. Hmm, what do plants need to grow? Tell someone nearby in your house what plants need to grow. If you said water, sunshine, and soil, you were right. And I'm going to teach you a way to celebrate that knowledge. Get your mirror out. This is my mirror. Look at yourself in the mirror and say, looking good. Let's do it together. Looking good. In our next segment, we are going to hear from Mrs. Ba. She's gonna get our bodies moving and talk to us about caring for our earth. Let's go. Hello, everybody. Today I am here to share with you a physical education lesson. This lesson is also going to help us to learn more about protecting our environment. So the name of our lesson today is Protecting the Environment, okay? It's very common that we humans throw down our trash and we leave it. We don't put it in the right place and that's not good. Not only are we harming our environment, but we're also damaging the living conditions 
for our creatures that we share this, this world with, okay? So today, we are going to pretend like we are cleaning up a beautiful lakefront somewhere in our state of Kansas. On this lakefront, people have left a lot of water bottles and some styrofoam. I know what you're thinking, this isn't styrofoam. You're right, it's not. This is a t-shirt, but I'm going to pretend like this is styrofoam, okay? Styrofoam is not something we should recycle, but water bottles are, okay? So I also have two containers behind me. One says trash and one says recycle. So for this physical education game, I'm going to use something to pick up my trash and put them in the right containers. I'm using spatulas. You could use whatever you have in your house that's going to keep you from using your hands to touch the trash. Because when we help with our environment, environment and we help clean up, it's important to use gloves or something so that you're not touching the trash. So I'm using these because I have these in my house. You could use whatever you wanted to play this game. It's important though that you make sure you ask the grown-ups that you live with if it's okay for you to use those items, okay? So I'm gonna show you now how we're gonna get our bodies moving as we pretend to clean up the shore of the lake, okay? I have a watch that I'm gonna set a timer on for one minute. And for one minute, I'm gonna see how many pieces of trash I can pick up and put in the right place, either in the recycle bin or in the trash can. Remember, my foam is going to the trash, my water bottles is going to the recycle bin, okay? So we have one minute. Ready, go. out of breath too which is a good thing so in, in addition to practicing cleaning up our environment for Earth Day I also have my heartbeat way high okay so when you play this game you could do a lot of different things you could try to see if you can get it all and how long it takes you um, you could challenge someone else okay so again that was called protecting the environment if you would like to know more about this lesson and some more, visit openphyzed.org, okay? Again, that was openphyzed.org. Thank you so much for tuning in today and watching this. Remember, pick up the trash, keep our environment clean, and get your heart rate up every single day. Bye, see you next time. Thank you, Mrs. Baugh. What a fun and simple activity to do at home to get our bodies moving and to practice taking care of our earth. I can't wait to see if my family will do that challenge with me later. To all our students and the kids out there watching this show today, we are so glad we got to bring a little bit more learning into your homes. On behalf of all Kansas educators, we miss you, we love you, and we hope you learned something about Earth Day and conservation today that you didn't know before. Anybody can help save the Earth. I'm Tabitha Rossbroy, and I hope to see you again soon.